Eric Clapton bringing us in. What an incredible career from Cream right through all the things he's done. Amazing. All right, joining us uh, until the bottom of the hour is Michael Snyder, and then we're going to air Pedophiles Rule the World special report from Paul Watson that only covers the confirmed mainstream news, world leaders murdering children, torturing them to death, devil worship, you name it. And it's only part one in 10 reports he's going to file just chronicling all the admissions and the convictions. And he says at the beginning of it, you know, Pizzagate has been discredited. No, not that they're using pizza code words. The media focused on one place. Some of us took the bait partially. Then they try to then have a referendum in the news saying pedophilia doesn't exist. Well, I picked up on it about four or five days into the story, pulled back from the beginning. MSM took that as a sign of weakness and said, oh, look, he's been retracting and pulling back. Yeah, because I don't lie about people on purpose. I don't have malice of forethought or intent to do harm of people that are innocent. If I can prove you're bad or done something, I'll come after you. But that's how Carl Rove used to set people up. Remember, he would have a big data mine of real news, but put disinfo in the middle of it. So that's coming up at about 35 after or so. Michael Snyder, of course, reaches millions of people a, a week. Uh, he has an amazing uh, website, economiccollapseblog.com. He's got others. And he just takes all the news, all the intel, mainstream news, alternative news, legislation, video clips, and weaves them together so that you can get a picture of what's coming. And he's been laying out the trigger in the Middle East and Syria, the trigger in the South China Sea, the trigger of the Democrats trying to push COG, and that mainline analysts across the board are saying, this is how world wars start. And I had Dr. Paul Craig Roberts on, former uh, head of policy at the Treasury, Part of the big fall of the Soviet Union, negotiated that, really smart guy, concurring that this is the most dangerous time ever for humanity. Um, Rand Paul saying that. We've had so many others on breaking that down. This is such an incredible time with all of this. And then to see them trying to kill Trump's global recovery initiative when globalism is meant to make you poor. Well, true nationalism coming back will, will, will make everybody wealthier. It'll create competition and not let the elites fix prices and you know lower wages. And to see the left cheerleading and, and, and Schumer, I'll play the clip in a moment, uh, saying that uh, Trump's like a, you know, uh, you know idiotic 98-pound weakling uh, before the Chinese. To see how un-American they are and to see them rooting for our fall, I wonder what's going on with some American people that buy into this. But here's the news. We know the polls are fake. They've always been 15, 20 points against Trump. So Trump is still very, very popular, but he is now faltering with the neocons he's put in and, and the military positions. I was hoping they just followed neocon orders. They're continuing all the neocon stuff now that this batch of generals got in. And they are just full steam ahead with rack and ruin, ladies and gentlemen. So here to talk about the nightmare scenarios, not to fear monger, but to let the public know what's happening to turn this around is Michael Snyder. Michael, wow, what a time to be alive. Oh, definitely, Alex. And actually, I'm more alarmed now than I've been in well over a year of the situation, the global situation with Trump. We thought it was all going to be about domestic policy, about the economy. But instead, foreign policy is becoming front and center this week with the, the situation with North Korea, where CNN says a White House official said time has now run out on the North Korea uh, nuclear program and that they said all options are on the table. And this is a phrase that has been used repeatedly by members of the Trump administration and basically what it is, it's a threat of war to North Korea saying, if you keep trying to get an ICBM, which could hit the United States, we are going to strike you militarily. So they are openly threatening North Korea with war. Of course, Trump is meeting with the president of China uh, this week, uh, you know, uh, right here at the end of this week. To, and China is going to try to buy some time because they don't want the U.S. to strike North Korea. But people need to understand this isn't like Afghanistan or Iraq or Libya. It's a totally different animal. Because North Korea, they've got the fourth largest military on the entire planet, and they've got nukes. They've got nuclear weapons, and they're not afraid to use them. And they've got brainwashed fighters that we learned about in 1950 that will do whatever they're told and fight to the death. 
They do. They, I mean, this is a society they're absolutely obsessed with the destruction of the United States is one of the central pillars of their society. And so if we strike them, if we were to go to war and Trump, you know, a lot of people are used to politicians making pledges and promises and threats that they never carry out. You know, like Obama, he, he would threaten other nations, but then actually never do anything. I believe that Donald Trump means what he says. And so when he says time has run out, all options are on the table. I believe that he's actually considering a military strike on North Korea. Now, well, they've said they happens? are. They've said they are. And top generals have said it may be the only option. And I understand even what they're saying. The issue is, why did our elites do this, A, and then B? How this goes down is they start fueling those rockets, put an A-bomb on there. We hit it. They then attack Seoul. Hundreds of thousands of troops pour across. They launch another missile at, 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 uh, at Seoul with an atomic weapon. Who knows? Then instantly, we respond with nukes. Boom. China comes in. You'll wake up dead. The hydrogen bombs will rain down at 2 a.m. 30 minutes after this starts, and you'll even you'll never even know what hit you. Yeah, this could be the spark of World War III. And so if people need to understand, because the instant we strike North Korea, they're going to start firing back. Now, they've got thousands of artillery pieces and rockets trained on South Korea. 100,000 100, artillery pieces. Yeah, and they've got that one of the biggest stockpiles of chemical warheads in, on the entire planet. So even if somehow we got all their nukes, there would still be nerve gas warheads, hundreds of the hundreds and hundreds in Seoul and other uh, major South Korean cities, possibly even in Japan, Tokyo. And, and then if we don't get every single one of their nukes, if we don't get every single one of their nukes, they're going to start firing what they have left at, at uh, U.S. military bases in Japan, possibly. Could you imagine a, a, a nuke hitting Tokyo or hitting Seoul? I mean, we're talking about an apocalyptic event. And plus, as you mentioned, instantly what would happen? We strike North Korea, they're going to launch an invasion of, of South Korea. And th uh, thousands upon thousands of troops are going to start pouring across the border because North Korea has a vastly larger military than South Korea. The only way that South Korea could survive is if the U.S intervene militarily on a massive scale with ground troops and then as you said you know uh, nukes could get involved china could come in and then just like the 1950s the chinese come in yeah yeah just like the original korean war where we had won the korean war north korea was defeated but then chinese troops started pouring across Three the border million. Because the China, they, they want China has an uneasy relationship with North Korea, but they they want North Korea to survive. They 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 can they like that North Korea is a thorn in the side of the United States. So China desperately does not want the U.S. to attack North Korea, and if we do attack them, our relationship with China is essentially over. It's going to be. By the, the way, that's the good scenario. As you know, most analysts believe this will probably lead to a full-scale nuclear war within hours. Yeah, and so and so that's the nightmare scenario. At a minimum, at a minimum, we could see millions of people die in, in either uh, South Korea and Seoul, in Japan. And so, at a minimum, we could see our relationships with South Korea and Japan because they, you know, they would blame us if something goes bad and their cities start getting hit with nuclear or chemical weapons, nerve gas. They're going to blame us, and our relationship with Japan and South Korea could be damaged forever. But so, you know, I, I don't know that. Uh, you know, we can't let North uh, North Korea get ICBMs, which could threaten our mainland. But on the other hand, I don't see how an attack on North Korea could go well, how it could be done successfully. Well, sure. I the problem is they keep shooting missiles at Japan, threatening to nuke everybody. I mean, we have a right to respond, quite frankly. You point a gun at somebody and say, I'm going to blow your head off. Then you start shooting at the ground right by their foot like Japan. I mean, I expect Japan to start attacking, and they've got a formidable defense force. But, but expanding on that, then, Michael Schneider, the Economic Collapse blog, how does the economy come into all this? And then how does starting another war in the Middle East or going up against the Russians in Syria with this clear false flag that Ron Paul's talking about and that we broke yesterday, I mean, it just seems like madness. It is madness. And I'm so alarmed that the Trump administration seems to be falling for this because they tried it several times. The, the rebel forces in, in Syria tried this several times while Obama was in office, a false flag, a chemical attack against their own people to try to get the sympathy of the world to try to draw the United States into the war in Syria. And Obama, you know, you know, protested, but he never actually committed our forces there. But I, I guess they figured it was worth a try with Trump. And Trump appears to be falling for it. And it deeply alarmed me when Trump got up in front of the, the press and he said, hey, for me, that crosses many, many lines. In fact, he said that that goes beyond a red line. Well, at the same time, he's criticizing Obama for saying red line and then act, never actually doing no, I gotta anything. I got to tell you, he, he, he's he got these generals in there. Who I don't, I'm not, 
I just don't want my kids to die. And I get we've got to be strong to China. And, and I disagree with Roberts where he's like, oh, China's not evil. Give me a break. China's completely out of control. Uh, our elite have armed these people. They've propped them up. They gave them all our jobs. That's why I hate our elite more than the Chinese communist. I'm just sick, sick of it. Why create this world? I've studied everything they've done, and it's all self-serving crap for bigger mansions, and then endangering the world, and then when these forces come together, the very people that put them into motion stand around like our heroes, wanting the end of the planet so they can act like they've got the biggest, you know, wee-wees. I mean, I'm just tired of it. Yeah, these neocons are literally insane, and it's all about money and power and wealth and all the things you talked about. But people like McMaster, they seem to be becoming more prominent in the Trump administration. They're getting into his ear. He's surrounded by these generals, these hawks, these neocons. All and they day all, long and they all jack he's... each other up. They all get each other up. You know, sir, we've got all these secret weapons and all this ready. It doesn't matter if 2% of the Russian weapons get through or the Chinese, we're all dead. You, you can't do it. And, and, and all, oh, man, I'm so tired of it. I mean, it's just, yeah, it's, I'll just say this then. If Trump's going to do it, he should just pre-strike him. I mean, that's the only chance we've got. If he's, if he's going to be psychotic, then hit him first, like Curtis LeMay said. Should have done this a long time ago, though. Should have done this in the 1950s, man. If we were going to destroy the Russians and the Chinese, should have been done then. And I'm not advocating that. Look, I'm not going to sit here and say, see, I told you so, that communist Chinese-style net censorship was coming to the web. Because it's already here. It's being announced. The way you keep the internet open and free is you get involved more than ever. Go to Infowars.com forward slash app. A new battleship in the fight. Infowars Live. Available right now. We're looking for a crew to man it. You gonna sit down and play games and be a trendy? Or are you gonna be part of history? Don't sit by and let the internet and free speech be stolen from you. Take action.